Welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on 2009 Jeep Patriot and we are going to be addressing an airbag error that we have and that error is B1, B02 and that's the clock spring. Uh, over time the connection uh, deteriorates. So the items you want to have on hand when you're going to do this job is uh, we'll start with where I started and that was with a 10 millimeter socket to get the airbag out. Uh, then you're going to have a 13 millimeter socket to get the uh, steering wheel retaining bolt off. There is one T20 Torx bolt holding the plastic to the bottom of the steering column. There are two number two Phillips screws holding uh, the plastic from the top to the bottom. And then we've got a steering wheel puller uh, and this is what I used and I'll put a link in the description below for all of this and then you'll also need the replacement clock spring. So I used an impact but you can use a ratchet and then uh, your torque spec on the steering wheel bolt is 37 foot pounds. Alright before we get started on pulling this airbag the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the hood take the negative terminal off of the battery that way we don't accidentally energize the airbag and cause a bunch of people a bunch of problems. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So it looks like this should be pretty easy for us. There's a wing nut on here. Hopefully, yeah, we can break that loose. All right, now that we have that disconnected, we can start with removing the airbag. All right, so we're looking for this 10 millimeter bolt right here, and then there's another one that you can, all right, so here's the other one. So I'll show you the angle that the bolt is in. So, just to give you an idea of how much room you have to work with, there's quite a bit. So I'm going to use an impact. And so this socket has a magnet in it. I'll leave a link in the description to a socket like this or um, and also this one. This is from Snap-on so it might be a little expensive but uh, I will say it's probably the longest I've had a 10 millimeter socket not go missing. And I think this one has gone missing several times, but I have luckily been able to recover it. Alright, so at this point the airbag should be ready to pop out. And then here we have two wires that need to come, or two clips that need to come undone. And hopefully you can see they're just two push clips on either side of each one. So I'll see if I can do them. I'm just pushing them in. So pretty easy. Just push them in, pop them out, and there is the airbag. Now the next thing we need to do is get this bolt off, and I believe it's a 13 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and get that removed. So here we have a 13 millimeter socket. It's going to fit this bolt here holding the steering wheel on. I'm going to use a 6 inch extension as well as my impact and we're going to go ahead and remove this bolt. So if you look closely you can see that dot 
or the circle that has been put on the uh, steering shaft. And then above that, you can see that these right here are, it's a wider, um, it looks different than the rest of the spines. So that needs to line up with where that circle is when we put the steering wheel back on. So now we're going to go ahead and use a steering wheel puller. I'm actually going to see if I can just get this steering wheel off, um, you know, just see if it wants to pull right off but I highly doubt that's going to happen. <laughs> I did move a little bit. All right, well, since I bought this tool anyway, might as well go ahead and use it. This is the steering wheel puller from Professional Tools, Performance Tools. All right, so the first thing I did is I put this little spacer in there and this is just kind of kind of hold it in place for us. I'm going to take this, put it through here, and you can see I just need to get it in that hole there. And then we're going to do the same with this next piece. Just try to finagle it in there. And then I'm going to turn it to where they are trying to catch on the inside. And then we'll go ahead and run this down. Looks like it's going to be super close. It looks like a 15 millimeter. I'll go ahead and put the impact on it. All right, looks like the steering wheel's loose. So here we've got the airbag wires, and there's one more wire we need to unclip here. Now the steering wheel is free. We can pull the steering wheel puller off. All right, so now we just need to pull the shroud cover off. There is one T20 right here in the middle. And then there is a Phillips screw here and a Phillips screw here. Right now we're just trying to get this over the key cylinder, I believe. Uh, I feel like maybe it's up against this piece of plastic here too. There we go. All right, we are free. So this is the part we're gonna be replacing and I believe the turn signal power, or the turn signal, the wiper modules, uh, they come off. Looks like there's a screw here, torques here. Um, so we'll we'll get into that and see see what it takes to get this apart. Alright, 
So that's free. Looks like there's a couple plugs here. If I come in close, you can see there's a tab here. Should just be pushed down on that tab and pull. Turns out that was correct. And then, I think we can actually just let this kind of sit off to the side. And we'll see what's holding this in. Looks like uh, probably a T20 here. If I haven't mentioned yet, there will be a link in the description below for the um, the clock spring. So I was kind of struggling to get this off here. Uh, right here, there's a little lip that we gotta lift this up and then this whole thing comes off so at this point we can unclip these plugs and they are just push plugs just push it in let me say that just push in cool Push in, pull, and then what do we got here? Also a push in here. There we go. So now it looks like we've just got one Phillips screw holding the wiper in place. So I'll go ahead and take that out. And then we will open the new clock spring. So we've got the clock spring out as well as the windshield wiper uh, switch. But I want to get this off here too. Just so that everything is off all at once. So we've got the windshield wiper motor to get removed from here. open the new one. Also, if I didn't already mention, the link will be in the description below. I got this from eBay, I believe. We're going to take a quick look here. So, very important, do not remove this yellow tab until everything is installed, steering wheel included, and then when you're done with getting the steering wheel installed then you pop this out. So we're going to go ahead and install the windshield wiper motor on here or uh, switch. It looks like these channels need to line up with these tabs. Fits in there nicely and we'll go ahead and put the screw in. Gonna go ahead and put the um, <clears throat> turn signal switch on. And one thing I did notice in this vehicle is the um, turn signal didn't want to catch for a uh, right hand turn, it kept kicking back. So, hopefully, changing this out will fix that. Go ahead and make sure we get this plugged in. Seems like it's plugged in well. So I don't recall whether or not that was... I bet the wires were pushed under here. 
So if you're doing this uh, after watching this video, uh, tell me if this is correct. Put it in the comments below so that the next person trying to do this knows uh, that that is correct to put those wires under there. Uh, if not, I'll be finding out the hard way most likely. So we'll go ahead and get this screw back in. So now that this is assembled, we'll go ahead and put this back in the vehicle. So now we're ready to reinstall and we will go ahead and plug everything in. Torques going in here, T20. So uh, this uh, this this aftermarket part doesn't have the little uh, lip where it was catching when you know when we took the old one off. So you just kind of have to hold it in place as you get it get it going here. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the plastic back on. Looks like we're ready for the steering wheel. So before we plug this in, I, I want to make sure that everything lines up. I think we're in the right area. I just need to do some shimmying and some shaking. All right, so that tells me where where we need to be. I guess one thing I wasn't paying attention to, I wasn't really paying attention to that little nub. Um, so it may have just needed to be kind of cohorsed a little bit but uh, we are on here that nub is in there so we're going to go ahead and run the the bolt back in to hold the steering wheel on and make sure we're good and tight that's not german by the way and uh, i'm going to go ahead and look up the torque specs because you guys really like torque specs or some of you do some of you don't care, kind of like me. But I'm gonna go ahead and look up torque specs and I will show you actually me torquing it down if I can find the torque spec. The torque spec required for this bolt right here, the steering wheel retaining bolt, is 37 foot-pounds. I've preset my Harbor Freight torque wrench to 37 foot-pounds. All right, we're torqued down. We're gonna go ahead and pull this plug here. And plug in our harness. And now we can plug in the airbag. And I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that it's very important that you make sure that the black connector goes into the black and the yellow goes into the yellow. So, there we go. Go ahead and slide this into place. All right. So now we will take our 10 millimeter bolts and we'll go ahead and get them started.
Right, so now those are finger tight. We'll go, go ahead and tighten them up. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and pick up my mess in the car. I'll go ahead and hook up the battery, and then we will go ahead and test it and make sure our airbag light is not on. I will also hook it up to my diagnostic scanner and see if it's still reading the B1, B02 code. Well, this is the part where we cross our fingers and hope that when we put power to the vehicle, the airbag doesn't blow. Well, I didn't hear anything crazy happen, so should be in good shape. Well, at this point, it's time to take it for a quick drive and make sure that the airbag light doesn't come on. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the uh, diagnostic scanner and make sure that that error code goes away. So I do realize that I had the battery unhooked and it should have probably, for the length of time we had the, the battery unhooked, it probably erased, well, it didn't erase engine codes because the engine code's still there. Uh, but the airbag light would sporadically come on whenever I would turn the wheel. And if you can hear that noise, that's another issue that we need to address on this vehicle. But uh, I believe we have the airbag situation taken care of and I've got to run an errand I'm gonna go run that errand then I will uh, get back home plug in the diagnostic scanner and see if there's <clears throat> see if there are any more airbag codes I don't know why I have such a hard time finding there we go all right so we're going to SRS we will run this test and see if the B okay so that is still on there and let's see we will clear that code and the erase was successful so I want to run that test again so we will go to SRS, run the code. All right, so it is cleared, and uh, we will verify that in the next couple of days. I'll I'll drive this vehicle and make sure that that code does not come back. So this repair was successful in removing the P the B one B zero two code. Well, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully, this video helped you in knowing what to do or how to take care of your B1, B02 code on your Jeep, Compass, Patriot, or Dodge caliber. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions, put them in the comments below to help other people watching the video. And we will continue working on this Jeep. So if you have things you want to do to your Jeep or need to do your Jeep, go ahead and subscribe and maybe we will hit on those. Or if you have something specific, go ahead and put that in the comments below and I will try to do my best to accommodate your request. Once again, we'll see you on the next one.